So we've improved or taken our previous question one further step. We found that the minimum velocity required at the top was 14 meters per second, and that is to maintain that circular motion, uh, vertical circular motion. Now we want to know what is the velocity at the bottom required in order to maintain that circular motion. So um, the bucket is going to be down the bottom at some point, whether it's the bucket or the rainbow's end thing or whatever. Um, and um, what we have to consider is the the energy. So at the bottom, it's going to be completely kinetic energy. The total energy will equal the kinetic energy. And at the top, the total energy will be a combination of, we'll, we'll call this EK1 down the bottom, it's a T, and the total energy will be a combination of um, the new kinetic energy, EK2, plus the gravitational potential energy, EP. Okay, so um, if we know 14 meters per second is uh, gives us our kinetic energy at the top, um, we can we can then backtrack. We can uh, uh, go from the total to find out what that um, kinetic energy will be at the bottom. In fact, um, we can form an equation like this because the total energy is the same. We can say that uh, e k one at the bottom equals E K two plus the gravitational potential energy. Okay. Now you might be wondering why we can't just go straight to the gravitational potential energy and use the change in kinetic energy to find um, the change in velocity. And the reason you can't do that, um, which I often make this mistake by accident, but you, you can't do that because the kinetic energy has that V squared factor. And it doesn't correspond that you can then um, just take a square root and go because it's actually the change in the velocity squared, which if you if you take the change of velocity squared, that's a final minus an initial squared, <coughs> and that's actually a much more complex uh, procedure than you would have otherwise thought. And so very easy to mix up and muck up things. It's just not worth it. Stick with. The energy. So let's see, let's progress this energy further. Um, we've got m, sorry, half m v1 for kinetic energy 1 squared equals half m, the mass doesn't change, but the velocity does, v2 squared plus the mass times the gravity times the height. And in this case we've still got that 20 meter radius, so the height equals 40 meters. Um, so notice that, again, the mass is irrelevant. You can cancel out the mass from all of these, dividing both sides by mass. And if we multiply everything by 2 to get rid of that half, um, tidy it up a little bit, that'll make it nicer. So V1 squared equals <coughs> um, uh, V2 squared plus 2 G H. Okay, so then in order to find V1 down the bottom here, the bottom velocity to maintain that kinetic energy which is at V2 at the top, we would just do the square root of that. So V1 equals square root of V2 squared plus 2 G H. And uh, if we plug in the numbers, um, V2, um, V2 again was 14 meters per second, 2 is 2, G is 9.8, and h is um, the 40 meters. So we plug all that in and we do a calculation and we'll come to around about 30. I think it was 31.3 or around about there and it's meters per second. Okay. If we went down uh, this path uh, and, and found the change in kinetic energy and used that to find be the change in velocity and then added that change in velocity um, to that 14 meters per second, we'd end up with a ridiculous number. Um, something like 48 meters per second. So uh, we, we can't do that, it's just different. It's, it's very, very important to know that. Um, what I suggest you do, rather, rather than make this video longer than it needs to be, um, what I suggest you do is to go through and set some arbitrary values, set an initial kinetic energy of 1000 and a final of 100, and so the change is going to be 900, and you can work out what the velocity it needs to be for each of those, give it maybe a one kilogram mass, so that it's very easy to um, perform the calculations, and just compare to see if they're the same. Compare to see if you can work out the change in kinetic energy, and then use that to find the change in velocity, and then 
can work out the velocity initial from the initial kinetic energy and the velocity final from the final kinetic energy and see if the difference in velocity is the same and you'll find it won't be and it's due to that squared factor um, in the change in velocity.